Because I figured the things that I was doing, yeah, you didn't I didn't want to bring it on nobody but myself. Exactly. And that's what I did, you know. And I let my ex-wife do good. She took care of my daughters. She made sure they got a good education and everything. I got a daughter graduated from Rutgers. I got one that's a registered nurse, so they turned out all right. And like, we all right, so we get along, we good. So Did glad, you, I once there. went to one of, one, of the, one, of, one of the weddings in your family, and yeah. I met many of your extended family members. Um, and it seems as though you were close with many people in the family. Have many of them visited you on the street? They come to see me, but most of the time I go to see them because, you know, they got this thing about New York. You know, I'm the one that loves New York. They don't love New York, you know. You know I love New York. They like Jersey. And what, what have been some of the times, though, when people from the family have come to see you on the street? Oh, they had to come to see me. I had a little surgery a few years ago. A few years ago, <clears throat> I was diagnosed for a on my voice box. So today it's kind of good that I'm here to talk to you guys, you know, because I had the surgery, and for a little while I couldn't talk, I couldn't eat, I couldn't do a lot of things. You know, my, my daughters and my ex-wife used to come see me, but I couldn't even talk to them. So it took me a little time. It took me almost a year to get back to eating and really, really swallowing. And, but today, thanks to God and everything, it's all right. So I'm glad to be here talking to you guys. One of the things in the film that we show is that life changed on 6th Avenue after 9-11. Um, and I'm wondering what some of your reflections are about the ways in which life has changed in the city, um, not only since 9-11, but you know, since Bloomberg came into power and replaced Giuliani and some of the other transformations that have occurred um, since Sidewalk was written. Well, when Giuliani was there, I mean, he put a lot of restrictions on us to make our money. Whereas, you know, we're at one point in time, we had two, three blocks of tables of books, and his so-called quality of life regime was to uh, break that down to one table per man, which you cannot live off of. So he tried to, you know, the, the, the cops was on us like, like crazy. They would come and take our stuff, throw it in the, in, the, in the garbage right in front of us, take our chairs, literally throw our whole business in a sanitation truck until, uh, well, you said William Cussler did a lot of things. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he could give you more on that part with William Cussler. He was a good lawyer. Yeah, he was a civil rights advocate. <coughs> Maybe some of you guys might have heard of him. His name was William Cussler. He had something to do with the uh, uh, Central Park Joggers. You know, he had something to do with a lot of people. He is the guy that really was responsible for staying out there on 6th Avenue <coughs> because he took it to them and he let them know that if they continue to harass us and continue to mess with us, they would have to deal with him. And for some reason, they didn't want to deal with him because they came to me and they was furious because they came to me like they wanted to do damage to me because of somebody I knew. And they just wanted to know who I knew, but I never uh, told you them. You knew somebody at power. They're scared when you know somebody at power. Yeah. That makes them a little nervous, so they backed up a little bit. And as far as the 9-11 thing go, I mean, things got worse after 9-11. I mean, you know, as far as just security-wise, I mean, the cops, they, they really had to be busy doing other things at that time anyway, so they wasn't really messing with us that much as far as post-9-11. But as, the, as time has gone down and with these, these notebooks you have and the internet, business has gone down like 50%, you know? Because when I was in school, I'm looking at all these people with all these notebooks, man, and these, uh, they'll call them notebooks with their laptops. And I was carrying a bunch of books, and then times have changed for real. So um, anyway, half you guys can get your stuff off the internet now. Y'all don't come see Big Warren. <laughs> oh, I got right. customers come up to tell me. I tell them a CD is three dollars. Oh man, I get that free. I just download it. I said, well, go download it then, man. Don't tell me about it. <laughs> I mean, you just pissing me off, man. <laughs> So the 9-11 and the way the economy is now, you would think people would come to us now. They come get a cheaper book as opposed to going to Barnes & Noble. But they go right back to that notebook. Yo, I could get that on a notebook for free for $2. I said, well, do what you got to do. So my business has gone down a little bit. One of the things that people ask me a lot is, um, you know, a lot of times people ask me, well, what happened to those guys in the book? And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to make the film. I wanted to update your lives. It was kind of a filmic epilogue to, to, to the book. But a big question is, 
how is it that they stay out there for so many years and don't move on to other things? Well, um, see, I, I'm gonna have to correct you. Like, well, like when you first saw me and you did me, I was homeless. <coughs> I had no way to stay. I had no structure. Now I'm housed. I, I pay bills. Okay, and um, I'm here with you today. Thanks but for the great Absolutely, and you've made some really big transformations. But I still have a lot still, more to do. But you with still me. are out there working on the street. I'm still doing that, right? What? What is? I mean, I asked you this in the film, um, and I want to ask you again, because you said you didn't know um, in the film. What stands between you and moving off the street to a, say, a job in the formal economy? Actually, finding out what I really want to do. I know I don't have much time left to do that. But being my own boss for so long now, that is a big problem with me taking orders from somebody else, per se. And I mean, I know I have to start from the bottom up. I'm not going to, you know, you know, blind myself to that. But that has a good reason. See, I would have to have something like, if you would offer me a job, Mitch, to come work for you, I'd drop it in a minute. Because I know it would be a beautiful thing, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, to go get a job in a restaurant, this guy's going to ask me, yo, I'm docking you because you're late. He wants a reason and a doctor's note. I'm going to tell him something in like five minutes, man, what you can do with this job. <laughs> okay? So, I mean, you know, it would have to be a good, you know, thing for me to do. It would have to motivate me because whatever I get into is going to be what I'm going to do the rest of my life, per se. You know, I mean, you know, to go get a job, a job for sake and just to have a job. Well, you know, my hustle is what I do. I do what I want to do. I have some structure. I, I go to work at 12, 1. I stay to 8. If I choose to go in at 3, I can do that too. Well, with a job working at it, I can't do that, you know, and I'm kind of headstrong. But given the right circumstances, you know, I, I, I want to go back to work. I want to get back into the job field. I need benefits. I'm getting older. You know, I can't put away no money like this. Like the money I make, I'm living from day to day, check to check, as you would say. So that's what it would take for me, per se. So if you got something for now, me, let uh, me know. Now, the reason, I will, I will. Now, the reason that I ask you that question is because you frequently tell me that you want to leave um, and right. would like to do something else. But Grady, you've never said that to me. And I wonder whether or not um, you like your life right now as a vendor and would like to keep doing that for a while. Or, have I, or, or, do, I mis, or do I misinterpret? Well, I might be in a little different shape than, than Warren, you know, because I did a few things in my life. I was in the military. And so I end up, end up getting a little pension from the military, plus I got lucky. I got to be 62 years old, so I get a little Social Security. So now I go out and I don't have to go out those books and things as hard anymore. So I'm going to let myself be a little content and be satisfied and be thankful and take that little bit and make it work. That's what I got to do. That's what I'm going to do. That's all good, too, you know. If, you know, he's 62, I'm 47. So, you know, he's got a check coming in, a couple of checks, you know, I'm not going to get into all that, but, you know, he's content. Like, I've always, I, I still look at myself, like, even now in the book, you know, I, I still look at myself, do big things. I still dream, you know, so, therefore, I don't want to let too many things know about, about me, per se, because if I do get famous one day, who knows what could happen. Well, you, are, you already are famous. Yeah, I know. You were my book, right? We're good with that. <laughs> what, 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 do people ever come up to you on the street and recognize you from the book? Oh, yeah. I get whole schools come up to us. Hunter College. They set me up one day. It was like one, two, or three. They said, will you please sign my book? Sign my book. So I turn around. I sign the three books. I turn around. It's like 40 more <laughs> standing behind me. I'm like, oh, my God, you know? So I said, I don't make a deal with y'all. See, this is how you take the business. I said, while I'm signing, y'all look around and see if y'all want some books to buy. So <laughs> <laughs> you know it, y'all. We, we had a meeting at the mines. It was all good, man. I had money, and they had their signatures. It was all good. <laughs> so and I like when they come. <laughs> and Grady, you're, as I recall, you're on the cover of the book. You're one of the nine photographs on the cover. Has anyone ever recognized you? Sometimes. But not since I started shaving, though. Very few people get me. <laughs> they don't hardly get me no more. But before okay. I was shaved, when I, when I wasn't shaved, they, they used to come. Okay. Well, listen, it's a thrill for us to have you in the class and an honor, um, as it's been an honor for me to work closely with you over the, um, the last 15 years. And I thank you for this. But well, of course, thank you. Thank you.